Well, here it is guys, our 1984 Teardown Mobile Home property. We bought this property as an investment, but it was sold as the home has no value. But we bought it anyway, and we gutted the entire inside. Now it's a little messy in there. We still have some cleanup to do, but now is when we start rebuilding it. We're gonna start putting it all back together, and we're gonna hopefully save this old mobile home. So this is what the home is looking like right now. And we have some real trouble spots that we need to start addressing. I'm gonna start with this window back here. You can see we have a big hole in the floor. The studs are completely gone. This whole thing got rotted out because of this leaky old window. This has been a priority of mine to get this closed up and put a new window in here. So hopefully today we can start walking through the process of repairing a damaged mobile home floor and wall. This is probably one of the most common problems with mobile homes because of the lack of roof overhangs and the way the windows are built. They're just prone to leaking and you get this kind of mess. You know, I'm noticing that there's a roof seam right here where the metal comes together and it's all rotted up here. It's very soft, which means there's a roof leak on that seam that came down this window and caused a lot of rot as well. So after looking at the floor, we figured out our plan of attack. We just wanted to find the best, most efficient way to replace the floor using the best use of our plywood and the existing framing that's here in the mobile home. I'm going to go underneath the home and use my oscillating tool to poke up right next to the floor joist. And that way I can get an exact location of where that joist is running under there. And we're going to try to cut along it. Yeah. So here is my cut. I have another one right here. We have this one. This floor, this part isn't too rotted. We can come back anywhere we want. Uh, let me see where the rot starts. Definitely some, a little bit of softness here, so. So, you got it on there? Um, yep. Okay, let me draw that line. Should be good though. After I get this out of the way, I'll extend that. Let me do that right now. Oscillate this out. Oh, that's interesting. They sealed under their bottom plate. That's cool. Just some big staples. Right. So this has some strapping on it. That's why that's not coming out. Uh, maybe I'll just cut it. If I can cut it. Okay, now the rest just gets ripped out. Yep, look at this floor. It's just rotted in here. Yeah. So now that I have that bottom plate out of the way, I'm gonna extend my line a little further. Well, now we at least know what to cut out. Yep. I just, I'm getting a safe distance from all the rot, just to be sure. 
You know, this is where the floor is still soft. It starts getting hard. Definitely hard. Okay. Now it should come out, right? Now we can save that for patching other areas. Yeah. That didn't go too bad at all. Now, I know we took a lot of good wood out of here and we're gonna save that in case we have smaller areas that need patching. The reason I went back so far is because when I put my new plywood down, ideally, I wanna see it span two bays. So I don't wanna just have a piece of wood right here over one area. It's just more prone to sagging. It's not as strong. If I can span it from here all the way to here, it's gonna be sitting on this and it's just gonna be a lot stronger for the home. So we cut that back and I'm really surprised by how intact this sill rim joist is. So it is rotted. We do have a pretty good chunk out of it and a lot of water damage right here, but considering how much damage there was to the floor, that's not bad at all. I'm gonna chop that out. We don't wanna leave any place for ants or termites or cockroaches to live. So we're just gonna chop out all the rotted wood. And then we're gonna end up sistering this all in with a patch. So you'll see how that works. But I'm gonna get rid of this part right here. And now it might seem scary that we're taking out so much structure, but you can see the home is standing just fine. Luckily, these mobile homes aren't built very heavy. There's not a lot of weight on the roof. So we're able to work in this wide span without worrying about any extra support on, on the roof structure or anything. That might not always be the case, but it's definitely the case with this one. I feel totally comfortable with this floating here for a couple minutes while we work. I didn't bring a framing square with me. That would have been ideal. Do we have anything else that's square in the house? Give me a, give me a sticky tile or something. Improvising. Framing square. Hey, that works, doesn't it? Yeah, sort of. We know those are square. Okay. We're gonna set it at an inch and a half so I don't cut the aluminum, hopefully. We don't wanna cut these wires.
That was the wire I wasn't supposed to hit. Let's go and screw it on the outside. Hold on by something. Just uh, a strap. There it is. Yep. We got it back to solid wood. Oh yeah. Both ends. Well, that'll fit in there. I'm going to try a longer 2x4 for 2x6. You did it. Okay, we got it upright. Now we just have to get it over. Straight back. If we had ripped it down so it was a hair shorter, it would have fit in, not as tight, and it probably would be fine. This is probably just a little thicker than these. Oh. But we don't have the table saw here. And yeah. So now we screw that in. Yep. And then we could slide this one in here. Just like this. Now that that wall is secure and strong again, we can work on this side. What I have to do is sister this up so that we have a new place to attach our plywood because I cut the plywood flush with this joist. Let me check for crown. That's not straight at all. What do you mean? Yeah, it looks a lot better. So we're just gonna use a two by four on this side. This two by six is more or less resting on the steel chassis. It's got plenty of strength here. This is just to attach plywood to. Okay. With this? Yeah. Yeah, I just wanna make sure it's snug up against that floor. I'm just checking to see how flush it is with the floor. I think it looks okay. It may never ever be perfect, but it'll be good. I should have my teeth there. Battery.
that looks so nice. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think this is an awesome start. Look at what a difference it is to already have one hole patched in the floor. Yeah, that is beautiful. And it wasn't that much work. We made it more work than it needed to be because we didn't come prepared with all the tools that we needed. I really had to pound that first joist in, that sister. And now the reason is because it's a little bit thicker than the old wood for some reason, just a little bit thicker. Tiny bit. I don't think in this unlevel old mobile home we're ever gonna notice that little hump in the floor. No. No. It's fine. It just meant extra work for us getting it installed. Now this isn't screwed down. We put our sheet back up to try to keep some weather out. That window doesn't work. That's why it's stuck open. We still have to tackle all the framing here, but we're gonna have to go home because we realized that we need some screws. Yeah, we don't have the right size to put the plywood down. And then we can do the blocking. Uh, we'll probably pull that plywood right back up and do the blocking. Oh yeah. Just to make it easier so we don't have to climb underneath again. Yep. And we'll do all that at once. And now we have a solid fresh floor to rebuild that wall on. And I don't think it'll be that hard. And then back here, we already have windows, brand new mobile home windows that we're gonna put in there. So we're gonna have to run to the store, I think, and buy more screws also. I have screws at home for that, but we'll have to get some more. And uh, we, we wanna fix that leak in the roof. We're gonna have to pick up some kind of roof sealant. So while the job isn't complete, I think that this at least is a good example of how to repair a mobile home floor. And that's yeah. the first step. You might not have as easy access to the underneath like we have because we pulled down all the underbelly, but the, the concept remains. You can see it's not too hard to deal with rotted floors and rotted studs. You just cut away the rot, get it back to clean wood, and start sistering. A lot of mobile homes, the floor joists are gonna run this way toward the wall, and some of those ends could be damaged. It's still the same process. Sister those up so you have some fresh wood sticking out, yeah. That's it. If you can't get all the rot, it's not a big deal. But I try to cut out as much rot as I can because rotted wood is a is inviting for insects. I guess that's all we have for now. Thanks for watching and coming along as we begin the rebuild of our mobile home project. This one will probably take quite some time. I mean, we're talking about a good, what do you say, a year? <laughs> Maybe. Two years? How, what's the goal? What's the timeline? I don't know, it could go quick. Maybe a year and a half. In a year, year and a half. Yeah. Let's go for that. <laughs> so that's all we have for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, take care. Bye.